Hey guys, AJ here from 3D Printing Systems. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you around the new UpStudio software. Now, some of you may be using UpStudio for a little while, some of you may be used to the old Up software. Either way, it's good to familiarize yourself with the software in case you learn something new. Right, so let's get started. So first, we'll just have a look around on the main page. We've got a little bit of info about upcoming tier time products, and that may change from time to time. So you have a couple of scrolling graphics there. Currently, it's the Up Mini 2, the latest release from tier time, the newest printer. Now on the left hand side we've got a few tabs taking us to different sections of the software and then up top we've got a few more tabs as well. So if we scroll over them they should tell us what they are. So this one we've got here is my account. We've got settings, share and skin. So let's take a little deep, bit of a deeper look. So we'll skip my account for now and we'll go to settings. Now in your settings you'll have the language settings. You can change from English or any other language that you're using. There's a few to pick from. We've also got printer. Now this is where you'll select the printer that you're going to be using. Now we've got a couple here for our options. We've got the Up Mini 2 and then we've got the Up Box as well. Now if you select one of those printers, it'll connect. And if you hover over it, you'll have a few more options. You can rename your printer, check the type of printer you have, serial number and version number. And changing between printers is as easy as that, nice and seamless. Select the other printer, it'll connect to your printer and that'll be it. Now the new UpStudio software does have features where you can connect to Wi-Fi enabled printers. So printers from now on will have will likely have Wi-Fi enabled. So we're connected to the Upbox at the moment. Let's have a look at further options. So we've got upgrade as well. So it'll give you a current version number of your software. We're currently using 1.2.1.6. System is up to date and you can be reminded of any new versions. And you've also got an update tab that's grayed out at the moment for any future updates. Lastly, we've got the privacy policy from tier time. And we've got details of that which will take you to their web page with more details on their privacy policy. So let's close our settings. Next option up here is share. So a quick tab to share with anyone that you're using the new UpStudio software. You can tell them about what you're printing at the moment, either using Facebook or Twitter. And then lastly, we have skin. So skin, a little bit of customization for you. You can change the background color or you can change the color of your models. You've also got a color palette there as well where you can customize it however you want. So those are the top tabs. Let's move on to account. So here you can create a tier time account. Now a tier time account will give you access to added value features. So one of them being custom material profiles, another that you can activate your printer. So all, all, later, um, all new releases from tier time will have activations where you can only do a certain number of prints before you activate your printer and then you can lock it down to your user profile, which is quite good for security. So to sign up, It'll just need a couple of details, username, email, password, and then confirm your password. You'll get an activation email from tier time, and then from there, you can go ahead and log into your account. So I'm going to log into my account. Let's have a look. So once you've logged into your account, you'll see any serial numbers that are activated to your account whether they are activated or not, and the binding status, whether or not you've locked them down to be used with your account as well. Again, once you've signed into your account, you'll have access to custom material profiles, which we'll look at later on. Moving on from the account section, back down the left hand side, let's go to the library. We're going to skip the up section for now as that's the biggest one. We'll come back to that. In library, you'll have a couple of STL files or downloadable files from tier time. So if you click on that, it should start downloading from the cloud. Then once you have access to it, you can throw it into your up software and you can go ahead and print it. Now this will be updated later on and there should be more for you to choose from. For now, we've got a few, few interesting ones. The bearing is quite a cool one, a little bit of a wow print. You get a pr bearing printed in, uh, in one go. And then lastly, we have the help section here. So in your help section, you've got a couple of videos to choose from. How to extrude the filament, removing your model from the print bed, just real basic stuff if you're unfamiliar with your printer. A um, couple of the ones here are all based on the Upbox, and again, that's looking to be updated later on. And our last section is now up. All right, so this is the part of the software that you'll be using most often. This is where you load your models, choose your print settings, and then send it away your printer for printing. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, you've also got the Home tab up here to get back to the start and get access to the library and other options. So let's just have a look around first. Now up top we've got the printer and again we can change the name of the printer here, type in whatever you want and then click the tick. 
We'll take the cross because we don't want to change the names at the moment. So you've got your platform temperature here and your nozzle temperature as well. well that'll be nozzle on the left, platform on the right. So nozzle, you've got the little arrow lit up and then platform, you've got the part of the platform lit up. Next, you'll have your material that you've selected. So at the moment, we've got ABS, or if you've got a custom material profile, you can rename that, and that'll come up as well. And the status of your printer at the moment, ours is not initialized, so we'll get to that in a second. To import a model, we're going to hover over this one here. Selecting that, you can either import a model. You've also got the option to import a JPEG or a picture file. So let's have a look at that first. So we've got the 3D Printing Systems logo. Now this is quite handy if you want to print a logo. Um, you know, it gives you gives you an embossed feature, or you can go negative, and you can get the other the other way where it's sunken in. So let's go with that. You can choose the base height, so it's going to be the plaque the plaque that it sort of prints on, and the model height, how embossed or how sunken in your text is. Let's go transform to model. Okay. And then let's have a look at our model. So already quite cool. We've got the 3D printing systems logo. Now if we wanted to print that, we can go ahead and print that. And we can pause at different heights to change the color as well. We could have the sunken in part, maybe white, and then the rest all red, and then the rest in a white background, which is pretty cool. So quite handy if you're doing models or logo, doing logos. Uh, we've got a few options here. If you right click on the model, you can copy and make copies, delete, Delete all if you have several models loaded. Select all, so unselect all. Initialize view, which is coming back to an isometric view. Rotate around the center models. If you take that off, it'll rotate where the mouse pointer is. And lastly is exit. So let's delete that. Click yes. And instead we're gonna load an STL file. So we got the bunny here. Let's load up the bunny. Now that we have a model loaded, we can look at how to transform this model. So we have this handy control wheel up in the top right corner. And that's got all our functions for transforming the model, moving, scaling, rotating. So let's start with the top one. We've got move. And if we click that, we can see you can move it along each axis. If you roll over it, and they'll light up in different colors. Or if you hover over the center, you can move the model freely. Now, it can be a little bit hard to move a model from my asymmetric view. So we can hold control and press T. And that'll give us a top view makes it a lot easier to load models and set out your build plate if you're going to do multiple models in a build. All right, now if you're not happy with where you've moved the model, you've got two options. You can click undo and then it'll bring it back to the default position or the last position it was at. Or we can click auto place and that'll automatically place the model. If you've got a single model in the center of the platform, uh, if you've got multiple models, it'll arrange them in a way that's going to be easiest for you to print them and that there's no overlapping. Next one we have is rotate, and again, we've got a couple of options where we can select which axis we want to rotate it on. It'll also give you a reading in degrees of how many degrees you're rotating the model by. Again, quite handy because you can see it moving in real time. The old up software, you had to select the amount of degrees that you wanted to rotate by. It could be a bit of a pain. But we've also got that option up here. We've got 90 degrees, 45. We've got different options, and we can select which axis as well. If you don't want to choose any of those options, you've got a more specific figure in mind, you can type it in here and then press the tick. So we'll undo, bring our model back to how it was. Brings us to the next one. What else we got? We've got scale. So we can scale by the set factors here. We can go 0.8, 1.2 is going to make it larger or smaller. Or again, we can select whatever figure we want. Where are we? Two, and press a tick and it'll scale by a specific factor. You can also do this on either axis as well. So you can select the axis that you want to use, say it's just the X, and then we can scale just along the X. But in this case we'll get a stretched out looking bunny and that's the last thing that we want. So let's move on from scale We've got view. So like I showed you before, you've got those hotkeys. You can press control T for top, control B for back, control U for underside, control F for front, and you've also got control I for the isometric view as well. Or you can use the buttons up here on the control wheel 
for each view you have, for each view you want. And you've also got the, the letters there denoted so you can figure out which hotkey you need to use later on. Click in the center of the uh, control wheel and that'll bring you back to your regular options. And then the last one we have is more. So more we've got mirror, so we can do a direct mirror of the object we have loaded. Delete the object, we can save the object, and when you save an object using the software, it'll save it as a UP3 file. Now that's a proprietary file, and you won't be able to edit it later on. Can be quite handy if you've got multiple models and you want to merge them, which we'll look at in a second, and then you want to save it as a project file where you don't want anyone else to be able to mod modify it. So a good bit of security there. Reset to default, undo again, Fix errors, so the UP software does have limited fixing capabilities, it's not as strong as most CAD programs, but it can be quite handy to get you out of a jam if you want to give it a go. So I've seen it, it's, uh, it can be quite handy if you've got a couple of red faces on your model, red faces meaning there's an error or an inward facing normal, and you can click that button and it will do its best to automatically fix them. If the software can't fix it, you'll need to take it back into your CAD program and fix it there. Now lastly, if we duplicate our bunny, now we're chucking a couple of models, or a couple of extras. We've also got access to this Merge tab now. So if we merge them together, now these are all one file. So we can move those around and they'll all stick together in the same position. Again, quite handy. Let's go back and undo that. Our bunny's already multiplying. There we go. And we'll select these two bunnies, control and click. We'll select only the, the models that you want and delete those all right and we're back to one bunny perfect now when you've got it unselected you'll see that it goes gray select it, it comes back up blue and in the top left of the software as well we've got a little bit of info about the model so where we got the model from the size of the model again can be quite handy now we've also let's just double connect back to our printer Now without the printer being initialized, we can do a print preview. So we can still set all of our settings uh, to set up a print. So we've got here the layer thickness, the infill, anything from a just a shell to just the surfaces, no bottom or top, hollow, semi-hollow, semi-solid, and then solid being the most infill, uh, quality, preference, and preference will open up to a, a whole bunch of new options. All right, so we can do all of that without actually initializing the printer and we can also do a print preview that's going to give us a readout of the rough of the uh, the time and material it's going to take to print this model so we'll let that complete and up in the top you can see it's now slicing the file so when that completes it'll give you that readout all right we've also got a visual representation of the raft just underneath the model as well so you can see exactly how much surface area it's going to take so this one six hours 59 44 seconds material 99.57 grams. All right, now let's go ahead and initialize our printer. And there'll be a few more options we can look at there. So I'll give that a little bit of time to initialize. Going back into print, you can see we've also got a new option with the UpStudio software called Dormancy. Now, Dormancy is pretty much putting your printer to sleep after it's finished to print. So when you've got those long night or weekend prints running, you can click dormancy and your printer will automatically shut down afterwards. Something the old software couldn't do, so it's quite handy to have rather than having your printer run all night. Now that our printer's initialized, we've now got access to a couple more options down here and also a couple of new ones in the print settings. So first we have print and we've got a little number next to print as well. Let's click on that. So this actually shows us all the previous prints that the printer has done. Now when you're loading a print or printing it, you can select a slot, let's say slot number four, because that hasn't been selected yet. When we go to print this, it will save to that slot and it will save to the memory of the printer. So you can take your printer somewhere else, connect it to a different PC, and all of those last prints will be saved. Now, it won't automatically save to a free slot. You do have to select the number that you want to save it to. Otherwise, it will just keep rewriting a number 10 as a default. You've also got reprint and again, a little gear wheel next to it where you can select the last jobs, it'll tell you when you printed them, and it'll give you the time based on your PC settings. All right, so those are our extra options with the, uh, with the print settings once we have the printer initialized. Let's close that and move on to the next one. So we've got Calibrate. Now, for the printers with automatic calibration, this is where you go ahead and do that. 
or older printers, the Up Plus still works with the Up, Up Studio software. You'll be able to calibrate, set your calibration values here. So we've got manual, we've got auto level for your Up Box and uh, Up Plus 2s, and we've got reset as well. Now, if you're doing a manual leveling of these values, you will need to reset the values first. If you don't know how to do manual leveling, check out our manual leveling video in the description below. Other than that, we've also got the nozzle height, so we can move the printer to a specific position using this dialog box. We can type in any position that we want and then click move, or we can click set to set the nozzle height. 95 is a little bit low for an up box. Lastly, we've got nozzle detect, which is your automatic nozzle detect, nozzle detect function for up boxes, up plus twos, and up mini twos as well. All right, so a few options there. Make sure you always click save when you're done and make sure it confirms it with your dialog box as well. And then the last option down here is maintenance. All right, now in maintenance, we've got extrude and withdraw as you'd expect. So that's loading and unloading your filament. We've also got stop and that's gonna stop it from doing any function it's currently doing. Material, currently set to ABS. And you can see in our one, we've got a couple of extra ones here, VABS and VPLA. And those are settings that we've set for our value type plastics. Uh, they printed a, a little bit of a lower temperature, so we've got full temperature control using the UpStudio software, and again, this works for all printers. So if you want to set your own material profile, click Customize, and again, this option won't be available unless you aren't, if you aren't signed into your Up uh, profile. Once you are, you've got access to adding a new material profile, so let's add a new one called Up, and it can be up to four figures long. Nozzle, we can set this pretty much wherever we want. Say this is a really low temperature plastic, we can set it at 180. And say we wanted to heat the platform as normal, we can go to 90. Now depending on your printer, these will have maximum values that you can set. Keep in mind that once you're setting a material profile, we can't guarantee whether or not it's going to work. You have to be careful that the material profile you're setting is going to work with the material that you're using. Otherwise it can lead to blockages. So be pretty careful with that one, but it's a very, very handy feature to have. Once you've done that, click save, and your new material profile is now available for you to select. Weight of, weight of the filament, so just like the old Up software, the new Up Studio has um, a safety feature where you can put in the amount of filament that you've loaded, and then that way it will calculate how much you're using when you go to print, and it will prevent you from printing when it detects you have less filament than you need. So you can enter in whatever value of the filament that you've loaded, or you can just enter in a really high figure and that's going to stop it from asking you for a long time. Otherwise, it will throw out one of those error messages or one of those warnings. Lastly, we've got the preheat option. So previously, this was only available for 15 minutes or a full hour. Now we've got 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and 60 minutes. And something I didn't show you before is that in your print preferences, you've also got a checkbox where you can tick preheat. That way, when you start a print and the bed's completely cold, it will do an automatic preheat for the time that you've selected and then it will go ahead and start the print by itself. Whereas previously you had to start the preheat manually, wait for it to get to temperature and then start the print afterwards. So it can be quite handy if you're running short on time, but again it's always, uh, always important to monitor that first day of your print just to make sure that nothing else is going to go wrong. So we go back down to our maintenance options. We can still start the, uh, the preheat manually. So we've got this button down here, heat, and if we click on that, it will start heating. There we go. So we've got our platform heating, getting ready to start a print. So easy as. All right, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. That's the UpStudio software in a nutshell. It's pretty basic. We haven't gone over uh, print preferences in too much in depth. That's for another video. But if you do have any questions, you can always email us, support at 3dprintingsystems.com. Otherwise, I hope this has helped you out. Um, leave a comment to, to ask any questions. Let us know how you're getting on with the UpStudio. Give us any feedback. It's always being updated, so let us know what you think of it. Till next time, guys. Happy printing.